during the break, Russ, but was that Gorilla's first first round that she actually won in this fight? Well, I, the first round was very close. That could have gone either way, although I gave it to uh, I gave it to Millbrook, but I gave her that, that third round convincingly, actually. Good right hand again from Garula Landon as Millbrook tried the uppercut. Oh, another right hand from Garula Land. The crowd sensing. Olivia Gorilla taking control of this contest. Olivia Gorilla, 13 years in the world of pro boxing, also into kickboxing, Muay Thai. She's a Muay Thai teacher when she isn't in the ring boxing, as we are nearing the end of the fourth round. Scheduled for 10 for the WBC Super Featherweight title. As we Here it is. Action from the fourth. Yeah, again, the good hard shots from Garula. She was landing the harder shots this round. Again, shot underneath. There was the uppercut, and again, she tried. The, Millbrook tried the uppercut and was met with a hard overhand right from Garula. And that right hand has been a real key, the same way that the left hook was the key for Millbrook earlier on. The right hand has become the key for Garula. When looking at the two fighters, you look at the Millbrook corner, and it appears under the left eye of Millbrook swelling has occurred. Well, let's see if they work on it in the corner. Round number five, fifth round. If Millbrook continues to lean forward when she throws that right hand in, she's going to keep walking into those straight right hands. She has to go back to finishing with that left hook and not falling in. The left hook is the key shot for her, and she lands it right there. But she's putting so much into that right hand that she's leaving herself open to the counter right hand, and she blood is starting to come from the nose of Millbrook, courtesy of those right hands from Garula. The two women putting on a great show for an action-packed crowd here at the Winnipeg Convention Center. Good shot underneath again from Millbrook. When Millbrook doesn't fall forward with that right hand, she's not wa she's not falling in. And there's the referee warns her for acts in unintentional headbutt, but she falls forward when she just keeps her composure properly. She lands good shots and makes it more difficult for for Garula to hit her. Referee has called time. I have never in 32 years of boxing seen a bout stop as a result of losing a breast protector. <laughs> That's a first. <laughs> Good uppercut again underneath. That's what she tried earlier where she got hit with the with the straight right hand, the overhand right, I should say, from Garula. Garula tries it again. Garula. With some dominating shots here to end the fifth round as the two fighters head back to their corner.
Russ, she may have started off slow, but Olivia Gorilla looks like she's taken control of this fight, especially in these last three rounds. Yes, she has, and, and she's taken advantage of the mistakes from, from Millbrook, who's falling in like that with shots where she wasn't doing that earlier, and she was up, up nice and right to throw the left hook. And there she did land a good left hook there on Garula, but overall, you know, it was Garula's round based on her aggression, and Millbrook has to stop falling forward and just keep a better base position when she's throwing her punches. Is that something the Millbrook corner should be notifying their fighter? Oh, absolutely, uh, absolutely they should be, and, and you would think that the Millbrook corner should be no, should notify them, notify her as well that she's falling in too much with her head when she's trying to throw the right hand and therefore is in no position to land the left hook. See, when she does that, that's fine. See, again, Millbrook falling forward, leaving herself in, in not in good position to be able to come back with that left hook, and she wasn't doing that earlier. This is round number six, scheduled for 10. And now she's really bleeding from that nose. Uppercut underneath from Millbrook, but she's not coming back with that left hook. And Garula landing that right hand over the top. The uppercut's on the inside. Good stiff jab from Garula as she tries to make her way in on the inside and she tries the right hand again. But again, the, the left hook from Millbrook, which was so successful for her, is, has virtually been non-existent in the last couple of rounds, probably in the last three rounds. Blood continues to flow from the nose of the challenger as we're ending the sixth round. Millbrook corner will be working on that nose. Because it's in such a sensitive area, that simply doesn't stop bleeding, does it? Well, it, it could. Once they, they'll get the pressure on it, they should wipe it down, and it'll start to coagulate itself after a couple of rounds, but they have to keep the pressure on it. They're trying to get the Vaseline in, in there, but really what they need to do is put pressure on it so that the blood can coagulate and stop and stop flowing. If you, let it, if you keep letting it flow, it won't coagulate. I'm learning new words every single time I talk to you. <laughs> For every one you learn, I mangle five of them. Don't worry about it. <laughs> this is round number seven, scheduled for 10. And on the line, the WBC Super Featherweight title, currently belonging to Olivia Garula. The corner must have told Millbrooks that she has to start firing back and finishing with that left hand, because that's if she doesn't do it, it's just going to keep leaving herself open to getting hit with the bombs that are being thrown back from Garula. Again, Millbrook falling in with that with that right hand, leaving her unavailable to throw the left hook. 
fatigue doesn't seem to be a problem with these two competitors. Brooke Milbrook described herself to me as action-packed and guaranteed that this would be the fight of the night, and so far she may have a case. Well, she certainly is, she certainly is action-packed, and it's not from lack of heart. Oh, the good right hand lands again, again from leaving yourself open and not finishing with the left hand. She certainly is action-packed, but tactically making mistakes, and it's causing her to take some punishment courtesy of those right hands. Russ, we're about to enter the eighth round, but action from the seventh round seen another great round for the champion. Yes, it was. And, and again, you know, Millbrook just making that technical mistake of falling in. You see, she throws that right hand, and her body is just there. Her face is just there waiting to get hit with the counter shot. And, you know, you, you, you can't just keep doing that time and time again against a fighter the caliber of the world champion, Olivia Garula, and not expect to eat some right hands coming back. And eating right hands is something that she has been doing throughout this contest. Scheduled for 10, this is round number eight. Round number eight, eighth round. And you can see the, the face of Millbrook is starting to get a little bit marked up as a result of those right hands. Garula has found the mark far more consistently than Millbrook has. And as a result, I've given her every round since the third. So I've given her five straight rounds in a row to the, to the champion Garula. This is Olivia Garula's second title defense. She successfully defended her title in France in December of 2009, making her debut in the boxing ring in 1997. Garula just is non-stop. I mean, she keeps working, working, working. If she, When she gets in close, she muscles her opponent. When she's outside, she throws a lot of punches. She's out strengthening her opponent. She's like perpetual motion. She doesn't stop. She keeps coming. She'll use elbows. She'll use her shoulders. She's a rough, tough competitor in there, is the world champion, Olivia Garula. And she seems to, little blood now coming from her nose, but you know, she, she seems to enjoy so much what she's doing as well. You know, she works really hard, no knockdown there. Yeah, referee awarding that as a slip as he cleans the gloves and the two fighters continue. Touching. There's the left hook from Garula. That, that's the punch that, that Millbrook should be landing. Touching on that subject that you just talked about, Olivia Garula, when the judges see a fighter working as hard and as long as Gorilla is in the ring, is that something that when a, when a round is close, that the judges will go to the... Absolutely, uh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. As we look at action here in the eighth round, Olivia Gorilla, another solid outing. And Russie talked about Gorilla's nose, how it is starting to bleed. John Vernon's working on that right now as she takes instruction from her corner. Round number nine, ninth round. This is round number nine, scheduled for 10. 
And on the line, the WBC Super Featherweight title. Garula just discourages you. I mean, she just keeps fighting and making it hard for you, and she resists and pushes you back and keeps throwing. You really have to dig deep fighting somebody like Olivia Garula. And I gotta say, you know, I, I've had the opportunity through many other boxing contests of watching Mark Nelson, the referee, work. And, you know, I just love the way he moves around the ring, the way he calls the fight. You know, he's, he's in command, he watches carefully, he's always in good position. And, you know, sometimes we criticize referees for, for doing a, a bad job. So, well, at least I do, you don't, but I do. <laughs> so, you know, when they do a good job and, they, and, and you see that they have the mastery in the ring, it's nice to let them know. So, Mark Nelson doing a great job here uh, refereeing this world championship fight. But you're right, Russ, most of the time the referee is either costing some fight yeah. or completely invisible. And the strong referees are the one that are completely invisible. And that seems to be the case with Mark Nielsen uh, ref fights. Absolutely. The crowd backing the champion. We're in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada for this title fight. Ending the dying stages of the ninth round, both fighters finishing strong. Russ heading to the 10th. It's the champ's decision to lose. Yeah, I, I've given her every round, like I said, since the second. She's, it's, it's a virtual shutout for Olivia Garula. There's a, there looks to be also a slight cut on the top of the head. I'm not sure if it's a cut or just blood from the nose uh, on, on uh, Millbrook. No, it must be, must, must be just from the nose. But, you know, she, she desperately needs a knockout to win. She just has been outworked, out hustled, out punched by the world champion Olivia Garula. So you expect a huge flurry to start this tenth? You know, I think she's been trying a huge flurry in every round, and every time she has, Garula has met her with more of an onslaught. This is it, the tenth and final round of the ten-round scheduled WBC Super Featherweight title. Again, the blood starting to flow from the nose of, uh, of Millbrook. 